space. He lives in a spectrum of the universe. When he ventures beyond this limit, he is in the unknown, a realm where strange forces are brought into play. When man attempts to misuse these forces, he is sometimes destroyed. Next, we continue our look at STRAIGHT, the drug rehabilitation program for adolescents and their families. STRAIGHT is one drug rehabilitation program that may help. Marilyn Ringo visited the program in Atlanta. By now, most of you have probably heard of STRAIGHT. It is the drug rehabilitation program made famous by First Lady Nancy Reagan's many visits. Keep me straight if you want to. Keep me straight this very day. You can have a brand new way of living. You can have a lot to talk about. Robbie? I thought about, like, like, um, like when I first started, like, doing acid and stuff because, because I never, I, I mean, I never really, I never really looked at that in my past, never looked at it as a, a, as a bad drug or anything like that, like it was. I remember I was kept on drinking and drinking it, you know, because I thought I was so, I was being so cool about drinking so much, you know. You know, my drug friends are sitting there saying, oh, yeah, she's really cool, you know, she's only 13, look how much she can drink now. You know, Tom wrecked my dad's car and stuff, you know, for shooting up drugs. I felt, you know, I felt I needed drugs to live, and I felt really bad that I was doing drugs and stuff, you know. It hurts that I'd have to rely on chemicals. Straight is a treatment program for drug users aged 12 to 21 and their families. The average age of the client is 17. The average client started using drugs at the age of 12. Remember, you know, just like how much I was hurting inside or something. Um, you know, I, I mean, like I didn't care about anything, you know. You know, I remember like all I wanted, like was it drugs or something. I just like wanted to go see my druggy friends because, you know, I thought, you know, like my druggy world was great or something, like living in my fantasy world. But, um, it's an emotionally intense program, one that is sometimes called controversial for its heavy-handed methods. I would feel very uncomfortable if we weren't controversial, because if, if we weren't controversial, we wouldn't be addressing the issues, calling the, the issue as we see it, and really getting to the, to the heart of, of, of the issue, which is chemical dependency in a, in a very dysfunctional, very sick family. Parents often have to trick their kids into going to straight. Rap groups are the major component of straight. Like the entire program, they are very structured and peer-oriented. The rap leaders themselves are graduates of the straight program. The theory is simple. Peer pressure is what gets kids into drugs, and at straight with professional supervision, they use peer pressure to get kids off drugs. You know, if you feel like you can't share your feelings in this group, why? Well, I mean, I want to I mean, trust. It's just, well, then why don't you? Because I never did in my past. Just every time you stand I mean, up, I, I mean, every time you get confronted, you start crying. And it's pity. I'll tell you that right now, okay? And I'm not going to take it. When a young person first comes into the program, he or she will stay in this room all day, every day, for about a month. At night, they go home to host families, families who've had kids in the program. In about two weeks' time, if they've earned the privilege, they can go home. Family involvement is crucial. If you think about it, the whole family becomes affected because the family is in, in it's almost like an enmeshed, I use the analogy of a wax, a melted wax ball. You know, the whole family is just globbed together. The, the, the roles of the parents are ill-defined. The young people's roles are ill-defined. And the whole family is, is very enabling and very, very interrelated. And until the family gets involved and starts to understand their roles as parents, their roles as young people in the program, and redefine for themselves their purpose and what they need to do as individuals and who they are as individuals, you get a very mishmash. And so the families that, that participate learn to, if I can use a, a, a clinical term, differentiate from, from the rest of the family. They learn to stand tall, if you will, uh, in, in terms of what they need to do as, as family members. And when they get to that point where they're starting to feel good about themselves as individuals and the family's starting to feel good, that's where the strength of the family comes in. And that's, I, I think that's a key element also 
in the recovery and the success of this program is that the main objective of the therapeutic process at straight is the revitalization of the family system the therapeutic tools used by straight include a modified version of the alcoholics anonymous steps and signs during the 12 to 18 months of treatment the kids progress through five distinct phases in the first phase the kids work on self they deal with their past as druggies and with their feelings in the second phase they work on re-establishing healthy family relationships in the third they go back to school or work the fourth phase is where they begin to develop constructive and, and healthy relationships uh, straight friendships and construct and they also work on constructive use of leisure time because we've, we've identified that you, know, you can take the chemicals out of the person but if you don't replace it with something positive like straight quality friendships and and construct and, and help them develop constructive use of their leisure time you still have a potential relapse situation where they may choose to go back to chemicals because they're looking to do things that they feel unfulfilled with so we'll encourage them to develop and to look at other constructive ways of spending their time and that's what they focus on in the fourth phase and then they move to the fifth phase which is the phase where they stand as an example to the lower phases in the program and give back to the group all right we're going to exercise some demons here all right a couple of things about this video of straight incorporated in Atlanta. Uh, I was actually in the group when this video was made. I hadn't been in the program long, but even then I could tell that we were, we were basically putting on a show for the cameras. We were, we were not to uh, act as we normally would, which would be yelling at each other and confronting people and wildly motivating and uh, that that kind of thing. It, it also never showed any of the the physical abuse happening, such as five-point restraints on the floor and screaming, yelling, uh, just general day-to-day -day, uh, stuff that happened in the program. It didn't show people getting led around by their belt loops and watched while they go to the bathroom and uh, things like that. But anyway, this video that you're seeing is what I would call propaganda to make you think this program was something really good, when in actuality it was just the opposite. There are people in this video uh, that I personally saw uh, get, get thrown down on the, the floor in a five-point restraint. Uh, for something like just trying to keep somebody from putting their hand on them. Uh, you know, somebody uh, who would lean back in their chair would soon find a hand or a fist running down the, their spine and it would hurt, you know, and that's, that's what you would have to do to make somebody sit up from the back of their chair. You couldn't lean on the back of the chair, which was just a, one of a myriad of stupid little rules they had to psych psychologically entrap you and keep you in a state of paranoia that you've done something wrong and you're going to get set back in your program, so to speak, using the jargon of the, the uh, mind control program they were using. <clears throat> but also uh, the girls, now this video is a, is a little uh, deceptive and that most of the people, the kids that were in straight at this time, this video was shot in the morning, so a lot of kids that were in the program were off at school or at their job, if they had a job, and a lot of the chairs are empty, but some of these girls right here in this video were, were in the program, you know, for a year without barely making it up to third or fourth phase and were constantly in group getting stood up and confronted and yelled at about something they weren't doing right and you know I saw girls girls carve into their forearms and things I saw them carve cuss words into their arms with their fingernails they were they were trying so hard to to scream out help for someone you know and uh, you know I, it's 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 just kind of frustrating to watch this video 
knowing that they're putting a smiley face for the cameras, uh, you know, they're using mind control on this group of kids, and, and I was one of them. I was there that day, and I was acting out this part of the good uh, go along to get along, do whatever's necessary, and uh, <clears throat> all of us in that room right there desperately wanted to look at the camera and scream, get me out of this crazy place. This place is nuts, you know. Uh, there's, it's hard to explain, but I know that was going through everybody's mind, how badly they wanted out of this place. Not, and it had nothing to do with wanting to go back and do drugs. It was that this place was a mind-screwing concentration camp full of Big Brother, nazi s type uh, uh, organi organization of staff going on. And the group as a, as a whole was this looming big brother, uh, the, the all-seeing eye type entity that you knew was, was going to get you for your thoughts even at some point. Your thoughts were going to show on your face or come out in your, uh, in your speech when you're called on to have to stand up, you know, and that's another strange thing is the motivating, it was called motivating, the flapping your arms, which in this video looks really tame compared to when the cameras weren't in there, they really made you motivate hard but the whole time, the harder you motivate, the more you're hoping they don't call on you because either you gotta make up something really dramatic about your past that, to, to impress the, the staff somehow, uh, or you, if you get called on, you, you might be getting called on to get confronted over something you weren't expecting or you're not sure of or even something is you know, that you know about, but it's really so little, it's, they shouldn't be yelling at you for. Motivating is a really strange name to call that right there because that's the, the last thing kids were, were, was motivated to get called on. You did not really want to get called on in straight. But uh, the staff members here are being very mild. The one guy is, is you know, kind of doing some confronting to this kid but normally without the cameras when he started in on confronting that kid the rest of the group would usually start motivating really hard to get called on one by one to stand up and yell at the kid too and get really uh, ver uh, verbally abusive uh, for the most part it was like a uh, attack uh, a pack of wolves you know when when all of a sudden there's red meat in the room everybody all of a sudden gets a, a chance to take out their pent-up aggression that they're not allowed to have any other time in the program except when somebody is getting confronted and balled out in front of the group that's when you get your one chance to get up and scream for a little bit at somebody else you know one time in group I actually started beating the living shit out of a guy who was misbehaving and uh, I just wailed on his head for a minute or two and he ripped my shirt and, you know it was a rough place you can be straight if you want to you can be straight this very day you can have a